before we start this video, a large thank you to Trey, Ty Ty, Burgett, Tarek, Crayon, Evan, Philip, Ooh Woo, AZ, Michael, Daniel, Rainer, Nathan, Saif, Nick, Sam, a name I am unfortunately not able to pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend and Jones for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you so much for supporting the content on the channel. Hello guys, and today we're going to make it so when we hover over our weapon, it will display our weapon's damage and its guard absorption. In the future, when we hover over an armor piece, it will hide the stats and instead display armor's uh, defense absorptions. So I'll show you now in Nephilim here. You can see when we hover over an armor piece, it shows the damage absorption and the resistances. Then if I change over to a weapon, like the shield or the sword, it will show the attack power, the stat requirements, and the damage absorption when you're guarding. So we're going to do the weapons uh, menu first, and we're going to do this by enabling and disabling certain game objects in the UI, depending on what you currently have highlighted. So for example, if you have a, a sword highlighted, it will show the weapons stats of the sword. So over here in the game, I am going to open up the player's UI, go to 2D view here. And I want to enable my middle menus that we made uh, in the last video. And I'm just going to enable the left menu to make sure that's looking good and is kind of positioned nicely. So I'm not going to focus really at all on the aesthetically pleasing bits of this. I just want to show you guys the logic. You can kind of play with the UI and make it look nice. And I encourage you to take your time with it and kind of mess about with it. It took me like four or five attempts with Nephilim. Actually a dozen before I really got some I liked. So I'm going to create an empty game object here under the frame. I'm going to call this weapon stats. And this is going to basically house, I'm going to hit alt here and make it the full size of the game object. Come down until I got like a nice size of a window, something I want. It's going to house the uh, attack power of the weapon and the damage absorption when you're guarding with the weapon or blocking with the weapon, should I say. So um, leave enough space for however many damage types you have. I'm only going to showcase doing one to two because if you can do one, you can do them all. I just want to show you guys again the functionality. That's the most important part. Uh, add all the damage types you want, really make it your own. This is just a tutorial and a guideline, obviously. So let's make another empty game object, call it attack power. Gonna make it, uh, hit alt, make it the full size of the game object. Gonna make it half of the weapon stats game object in size, okay? Just about half. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna call this uh, damage absorption. And again, this will be the box. I'm gonna put it over here to the right of the other one. It should snap together if you have it really on the line there. Like if I hit alt and then come over here, it'll almost, it'll almost snap. Uh, but this is going to be where you put the weapons defenses when you're guarding um, in percentages. So under the attack power, we're going to make a, a text object called title. I'm going to call this attack power. And then I'm going to turn the text color to white so we can see it. I'm going to position center. And I'm going to put that just right at the top. So I'm going to make it the full size. by hitting alt and then kind of drag it right up so it's just right on the top of the attack power game object. I'm going to copy it, paste it as a child into the... Uh, damage absorption, reset it, hit alt, and kind of do the same, drag it right up top. If you want to get super particular over this, you can kind of give these two title game objects their own game object, and then give it a an organizer, a horizontal organizer, so it will be exactly the same distance apart. And you can do the same thing with these uh, two game objects for attack power and damage absorption, give them their own organizers. But anyway, I'm not going to do that because we're going to get the functionality down. So I'm going to make uh, another empty game object. I'm going to drag it down so it's a little bit below the title. I'm going to call it attack powers. And actually, I'm going to paste that under here too. Do the same thing. Just drag it over here. It should snap like that. Uh, or you can bring it more to the side. And I'm going to name this one down here damage absorption. And I'm actually going to keep that as attack powers. That's That's fine. Now, let's add a vertical layout group to the attack powers empty game object. Let's change it to middle. Actually, no, upper left is fine. Uh, let's add a text element under here. And I'm just going to call this physical text. And this will represent the physical damage. I'm going to keep it as the word uh, physical. Resize that as I need. Because this is going to be basically just the... It's just going to be the text as physical damage or physical. And then to the right of that, we're going to add another text field that'll have a number that changes depending on the weapon's damage itself. So just really put the text here, whatever your damage type is. It could be physical, elemental, magic, lightning, uh, whatever you have it called in your game. And then uh, I'm just going to resize this a little bit so it's smaller. And then uh, under the game object of this physical text, just so it stays with the vertical layout group, uh, parent under this, I'll make another text. I'm going to call this uh, damage text or physical damage text is what we should call it. And then I'm going to just put that to the right of the physical text itself. And this will be the text field we actually change when the weapon highlights itself. Okay, so let's make this white or whatever color you want to. And then I'm just going to put it at zero. It will be defaultly zero if no weapon is highlighted. So basically when the weapon is highlighted, we're going to change that number and not the physical text itself. 
So just to add a second one here to give you another example, I'm just gonna call this magic text. And I'm probably not gonna hook this one up. I'll just put it here so if you guys want to do it, because if, like I said before, if you can do one, you can do them all. It's the same principle over and over again. I won't waste time repeating the same thing six or seven times. Uh, I am going to change the spacing to something a bit smaller so it's not so far apart. So maybe minus 200 should be fine. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so uh, now you can basically just copy the same procedure with the layer group over here, but instead, I'm actually just going to delete the damage absorption and just paste it back again after I change this to magic. So I will be right back. So I'm just gonna delete this and copy the attack power and then paste it and just kind of move it to the right and change the title from attack power to um, attack or damage absorption. I tried to paste the vertical layout group onto the other game object, but it was acting very weird. So this is just an easier way to do it. Probably should have done this from the start because we're using the exact same damage values. If you have a physical damage, then you're going to have a physical damage absorption. Likewise, if you have a magical damage output, you're going to have some magical damage absorption, most likely. So that uh, will work in the exact same way. Let's just change the text title from attack power to damage absorption. And now anything that you want your only your weapon to have, you wanna put under this weapon stats game object, because you can see we're gonna, we can, we're gonna turn this off uh, or on, depending on if you are highlighting a weapon or not. So if you have any weapon only values like requirements, which we will cover in the future, we'll come back to that, don't worry, uh, put them in there now. So over here now, let's go to the item stats window UI. Let's make a, another header over here called weapon stats. And then let's add our four variables. So we have four text fields here. Um, we have weapon physical damage, or you can just honestly call it physical damage because the header itself says weapon stats and damage will be uh, indicative of a weapon. So we'll say physical damage, uh, and then we're gonna say physical absorption, and we're just gonna say text to keep the variables the same name as the game objects. Might have to change those in the scene view too. And then we're gonna say magic damage text, and then phys physical damage, or physical absorption, sorry, text, and magical absorption text. Now, as I stated before, these four text fields will just be the four numbers next to the um, words we have here in the stats. So you have your, physical text, but then you have your damage under here. And I'm gonna rename that so it's very clear. And I'm just gonna actually change all those names very quick. I say this all the time, you guys, you should always name your game objects in the scene view the same name as their variables, because if everything ever comes unplugged, you can just search it in the scene view, it'll be very easy to find it. So I'm going to say physical damage text, magic damage text, and then phys physical absorption. This one wasn't even called the right thing to begin with. So physical absorption and then magic absorption. And then we can drag those in there. So this really becomes a very simple task after this is all set up. All we have to do is just basically feed values from our weapon, which we already do to um, display the icon, drag these in by the way, uh, drag in these text variables. But yeah, we already get the weapons icon and name and we, we update that here. So we can also just take across now the damage and absorption. So over here, I'm going to make another headers above this and I'm going to call this uh, equipment stats window. And then I'm going to put a public game object weapon stats. In the future, we'll have armor stats here and maybe uh, ring stats, whatever else you want to have here, because depending on what item type is highlighted, the middle panel is going to change a lot. So let's go down here now and let's take the weapon stats game object and drag it in here. You'll notice it's named the same as the variable. And we're good to go. So now we have to locate where we actually change the title and the name. And I think if I remember correctly, it's done on the weapon or the item stats. Uh, window UI, but I don't know for sure. So I'm just gonna follow this code for a second. Yeah, so all right, select the slot. Uh, that's close right here. Update weapon item stats. That's what we want. So let's go to the definition of that. And that is under, yes, the item stats window UI script. We want to come down here. And what we're gonna say is if the weapon is not null, so at the bottom of this uh, bit of code here inside the if statement, we wanna say weapon stats as in the game object dot set active equals true. I don't think I need to put dot game object because it's a game object variable. And yes, I will be correct. That's fine. Uh, and before we enable this game object, we also want to basically update the values. Now in my project Nephilim, I don't close out this window if you move to an empty slot. So if you move from a straight sword to the right hand slot next to it and it's empty, it will still display the straight sword. But I'm gonna do it so if there's nothing in the slot, we just close out the menu and it's it's displaying nothing. And we're gonna do that very simply. Now we're gonna say physical damage text dot text equals weapon dot physical damage to string. Then we're gonna say physical damage or physical absorption text dot text equals weapon dot physical damage absorption to string. It's just that simple. Uh, and then on the else statement here, if we don't have a weapon, if it is null, uh, we're just gonna say weapon stats set active false. That's it. 
So we're just really dragging these values over from the weapon. The more um, information you put on your weapon, the more you can kind of display here by pulling it over. So if you guys have weapon weight and stuff set up, I encourage you to, to put all that in right now. You can go ahead. I'm going to go now and hit the equipment window and open it up. And you can see I have the butcher sword and the straight sword equipped up here. Now, if you go to the butcher sword, you can see there's 27 physical damage, 22 damage absorption. And then this is 32 physical damage and 26, I think, uh, absorption. So that works as intended. Now, when we add weapon requirements, we're going to come back to this and add those in as well. Um, this video is a little bit shorter. So because of that, I think I'm going to do two this week. I just didn't want to put the armor and the weapons in the same video. Uh, I felt like that would be just not ideal because I want to do a couple different things for the armor. And we're going to also circle back here again when I do weapon stat requirements. So I know this week has been very busy. So sorry for a lot of you guys messaging me and I'm taking a while to get back. I promise it will be back to normal within the next seven or eight days. I've just had a lot of work to do this week. So with that being said, thank you for watching, guys. If you made this far, please drop a like. It does genuinely help out the series so much. A large thank you to my patrons. It is because of you guys I get to keep doing this. I appreciate you all so, so much. And I will see you in the next video when we do the armor stats. All right, see ya.